I just made this video in response to Serpent Zede's latest video where he talks about teaching English in China. And I find it quite ironic that someone who for so long um, denied being an English teacher and described himself as a consultant training doctors and training Tencent executives about how to receive foreign dignitaries is now a proclaimed expert on ESL in China. Now, what does... I don't understand that. Now, what does Serpent Zede say in his latest video? What what he's saying and the tone of what he's saying reminds me of another YouTuber from China who, um, I guess I comment on his videos, he comments on my videos sometimes, Charlie Lin. And he talks about... I like this guy, Charlie Lin, a lot. Check him out. And this guy talks about how Serpent Zede just has such a negative view of everything. And I think that that's true. And, and this most most recent video really bears that out. So what's he saying? He's basically like narrowing the amount of like possibilities for foreigners to teach in English. He talks about you can work at EF or you can work at Wall Street, but that's gone. And you can either work at, tho at those two schools, or I guess EF, or you can work at uh, a training center, which is completely um, like it's it's not safe. It's risky. That's that's what he says. So let's talk about that. EF is just one employer. I had a job interview with EF in Shanghai and we were talking about it and in the end I was like, I don't know, I just didn't feel like it was right for me. I still remember having the job interview. Uh, I had it like in the State Library in Melbourne. Um, I found a quiet place and I had it, I had it there. And I remember like talking about all the details and it just didn't seem right for me. But look, what Serpent ZA is saying is just not true. Like, there's so many different ways that you can teach English in China. Um, you can work at universities, you can work at public schools. And he's got this pessimistic view of everything. There's certainly, like, some big changes coming, but how those are implemented in different cities is yet to be, yet to be known. I mean, Shanghai has made a very unusual uh, new policy where English is not a core subject in primary schools. So that means, in effect, that English can be taught uh, after school and on weekends. So that's how Shanghai's interpreted the new law. And correct me if I'm wrong, like that's what me and my friends are saying, that's how we've interpreted what's happening in Shanghai. But if, if I'm wrong, um, please let me know in a comment below. Um, there's the pilot cities. So the pilot program will go on for a period of time. I don't know like for how long and in the meantime like any uncertainty in any industry um, creates uh, that that feeling of like do we want to invest because investors don't like uncertainty they like they like certainty so there's obviously that but but in terms of like it being the end of the world for China ESL or the training centers are just going to vanish or something like that. I think he's really just fear-mongering and um, I don't think that's very nice. He has a lot of subscribers that are within China and it's not really very kind of him to create all of that fear just to suit his own narrative that China is no longer a good place to live and and uh, it's not a safe place for, 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 for English teachers to, to work. So look, if we talk about English teaching, what about international schools? What about public high schools? Qualifications are like money. I mean, you can see my qualifications on the wall. I've got a couple of other smaller qualifications. Um, a certificate three, I think, in maritime safety, uh, which is like a coxswain certificate to drive small boats. And I've got uh, uh, a couple of other little certificates like that. But, you know, those are my main qualifications. Now, qualifications are like money. I mean, you're always better off with more. So, like anyone who wants to be really, really, really assured of having long-term employment in Chinese schools, um, go and do a teaching diploma, do one online, um, do a PGCE. Uh, there's lots of different, like, qualifications that you can get that's going to, like, increase your chances of, of being able to, like, stay valued uh, in the country. But as everybody knows, in China, it's also about relationships. So. You do find people with with low or no qualifications doing pretty good jobs because they know the right person 
and I don't think that that is going to be necessarily changing, even though Winston would have his viewers believe that it's the end of the world, the end is nigh, um, because that's his whole, I guess, business model, that the world is ending and he's the one who knows about it and like he's not in China anymore, so China must be a terrible place to live. It's nonsense. It is nonsense. And he, he himself, I think, must privately acknowledge that that last video about ESL was pathetic. It was him, it was like one of my videos, you know, it was just like, except not as compelling in my humble view. Um, it was him just talking about ESL with a couple of clips in the background and like a little thing about investors. He made one, he said, oh, I'm gonna talk about investors. Well, what did he say? He said, you'd have to be crazy to invest in China now. Um, really? Like that's not, that's not really useful information for anybody. But um, yeah, he's built up such an audience that his videos get 100,000 views or 200,000 views, even for something like that, um, which is cool, good on him. Like I'm, I'm happy for him, but, but at the end of the day, I don't think that someone who seemed to be embarrassed about teaching English and someone who denied being an English teacher for so many years um, and described himself as a consultant and, and as a, a, a trainer of Tencent executives, a trainer of doctors, can now turn around and start to become this authoritative source on ESL. Personally, I think that the implementation of these new laws is going to be a lot uh, better than people than people believe and if you're talking about someone who has a training center or who's opening a training center that's always been a very very difficult business in this country it's never been an easy business i've had friends who have been in this business you've got uh rents rents are often like so high um it's such a difficult business and especially with covid it was such a difficult business and so many schools collapsed because they just couldn't operate but there's also like so many exciting things happening with online learning and people are opening new training centers and like, I just don't see it as the end of the world. Like, and in Tianjin, things are operating as usual. You know, people are going to work in their training centers. They're not, they're not, um, they're not being told that it's the end of the world. So Winston once again, and uh, to reference Charlie Lin once again, um, he's just shown his attitude and how he thinks about things, which is, very negatively and he has a pessimistic view of everything and that's just who he is but personally like I feel like um, and I, I made this comment in my other video if you if you if you if you've watched that there's also some very interesting exciting things happening such as the online education delivering online classes to smaller cities and smaller towns in the west of China which I'm going to be a part of so it's a it's a very exciting time as well for ESL in China. So that's all I wanted to say. And um, yeah, I hope everyone's having a good day. Bye bye.